called set theory. And today we're going to be the, in doing the introduction. Okay. So we're, we're introducing um, a new unit, um, that unit being set theory. Um, we'll talk about what it is, talk about what we can do. There's a lot of things we can do. And we're going to, over the next week or two weeks, three weeks, uh, I haven't decided how long we'll be on this unit. I think we're going to be on it for quite some time. Um, there's a lot of cool um, conceptual things that we can do with these. And if you've ever seen an advanced math textbook um, and you're like, what the world is that trying to say? Uh, most of the language that they use um, revolves around uh, set theory. And so um, I hope that you'll be able to be one of those individuals that can now um, read them once we finish um, this unit. So it's almost like learning a new language, um, new, you know, how to, how to write it, how to, to, how to read it, all that good stuff. So set. A set is a collection of distinct and, and distinct, we, that's kind of what we refer to as discrete, okay? Uh, elements. Um, now, it can be the elements can be numbers. but can also be anything distinct such as colors, animals, people, dot, dot, dot. So set or sets. Sorry, I want to say I want to do an S for sets. A collection of distinct elements. And when we say this word distinct, that's what we refer to as discrete. Um, there's there's this one and there's this one and there's this one. Sequences are often, I'm sorry, are, are sets. Now, they're not the dot of, they are. They are one type of sets, okay? So the reason why this unit's coming after sequences is because we, we've kind of shown you some types of sequences. Now, we didn't use the notation for those, but we will utilize some notation for sequences um, that we had. So, for example, i.e., if I we had a, a n was equal to um, 1 plus n minus 1 times 3. We wrote this down before as 1, 4, um, 7, 10, 13, dot, dot, dot. Instead of writing it like this, we have a new notation that we can use. And to, to write it as a set, We use braces. Oh, man, they're gonna be on my all day. Hold on, real quick. <laughs> so it uses braces, and what I mean by a brace, it's and it's, it'll be a little tricky to write at first, but you're gonna do it a lot, so you'll get used to it. It's that little brace key right there. So you have it on your keyboard, typically, or on your. You can always write it on your keyboard. 
Um, you know, kind of looks like um, like like faces that are face the opposite direction. Right there. So we can say a n, which is equal to one plus n minus one times three, which is the set one, four, seven, ten, thirteen, dot dot dot. So this right here is the same thing that we just see above. This says the same thing, but as a set. And we're just saying that it's a collection. Now, sets do not have to go on forever. Um, and while I said they don't have to be numbers, um, we often do use them as numbers. Sets are typically, and how we will do it, are typically defined with capital letters. Okay? So, if I had, for example, set A, A could be the set 1, 4, 7, 10. Now, because there's no, I want you to also note here, there is no dot, 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 which means these are all the elements. So we're not going to actually be focusing now on trying to come up with a formula. Okay, so we're not going to be a formula like how do I get those? How did I get one, four, seven, ten? That was the idea behind sequences when we covered that unit. How do we get one, four, seven, ten? How do we um, state that pattern? What our focus on today is how do we write this and no, and and do notations for this. So we refer to this as set, and we and we can define sets as anything. Like I said, it could be animals. Set set A could be like cow, pig, chicken, um, donkey. You know, and that would be our set. But numbers are typically easier to work with, and that's how we'll do it as our introduction. So again, on here, A is the set. One is an element of A. Four is an element of A. So when we use that capital letter A, it's set A. And I know I'm just getting a little redundant here, but I want to do it anyways for its first purpose. Seven is an element of A. Ten is an element of A. Now, seems to be a lot of words, right? You're writing that one is an element of a two four is an element so as we will continue to learn throughout this unit there's notations that we can use does anybody know how to write uh, I, I don't know if anybody has been introduced to this type of topic in the past or maybe has done their own own learning um, does anybody know how to state uh, mathematically that one is an element of a Anybody? Okay. 
Oh yeah, I know. I, my default answer is going to be no. I'm just wondering if there's anybody that is in yes. So, no. I, I tell you the truth. Until I studied this topic, and I, I had very advanced math learnings and stuff like that. I, you know, like I, I have a very big extensive background, uh, but I never actually studied um, discrete mathematics um, in my time in college. It wasn't something I planned on teaching, planned on really learning even. Um, so I, I really didn't even know it until uh, in, until not very, not you know not too long ago. So it's 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 good. So we say one and. We use, it looks like an E, all right? It is, it's like an E. So we use, it's, it's like a, first off a C with an extra line in between. And so this is set notation for stating elements. Now we're talking about the the individual element in that. Okay. So that notation right there, so uh, one of the biggest things that I want you to be able to read is that when we say when we say that notation, um, that notation refers to um, elements. So that it's an E, right? And it kind of makes sense, right? There's a, it's an E, E for element. One is one. Uh, one is an element of A. Four is an element of A. Seven is an element of A. Ten is an element of A. So these are all the elements. Now, right. there's some mathematical. So now let's take a look at let's let's take a look at two different sets. All right. So relationships of sets. Okay. Let's say we have two sets. All right. Um. So we have. So there's set A, and we have set B, okay? Or actually, you know what, let's just look at, let's just look at set A right here. Let's look back at set A, um, where A was equal to 1, 4, 7, 10, okay? And let's look at another set, all right? So we'll call it set B, and set B is the set one. So now I'm stating that this is a set. It's just the number one, and yes, the number one is its own set. It can be its own set, so we have another set that is one. All right, can somebody tell me what we notice about these sets? Can you tell me how, how they're related? What do I see about set A and set B? So hold on, sorry, I didn't raise my volume was off. Okay, say that again. They both they they both have the number one. Perfect. Both sets include the number one and that's going to be very important all right can somebody tell me um what uh can someone go even a of go a step further on that okay and i know this one's a little bit tricky are they both elements? what is that are they both elements? so one is an element okay so 
Um, another way of saying this right here is that one is an element of A and B, okay? What do we notice about set B? Not just, not, not looking about the element part of it, but what do we know about the entire set of set B? What can you say about the entire set B um, in reference to set A? Just one number. Just one number. Well, all of set B is inside all of, or not, is included, is in set A. All of it. The entire set. All The entire set of B, and which is kind of what you were saying, but because we, we needed to be a little bit more specific, um, because if I, if I gave you a set, for example, where it was like 1 in 5, it would still be true about what you said, and that's going to be an important piece, as we'll get to. I don't think we're going to get to it today, but... Um, if if set B was like one and five, then you would still say they both include one, but they both don't include five. So in this example, we say that B. What we say here, because of this right here, we say that B is a subset of A. But A is not a subset of B. So this idea behind subsets, this is our next vocabulary word that we're focusing on. Subsets. A subset is, in a basis, the understanding is part of the set. It is a subset, it is part of the set. So um, A, the number, the set element of just one is a subset of A because B is included all of the elements of B a set is a set B is considered a subset of A when all the elements in B are also in A. Determine if the following are subsets of A, where A is a set 1, 4, 7, and 10. So let's do a little quick example. Make sure you understand the definition. So the first set is 1. Is this, is this a subset? Yes. Yes, it's, it's the exact it's the same example we said. So the answer here is yes. And when I say yes, I'm saying yes. This one is a subset of there. What about four? Yes, two. Okay. What about one and four? Well, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> what about one and five? No. No. And this is, so one and five is not a subset, but, and this is the main thing, they both share the element one. They both, one is included in both sets. One is included in the in set A, and one is included in the set I'm looking at. 
However, we do not refer to this as a subset because the number five, the element five, is not also in set A. What about the null set? This is a very specific special set. The null set, which we write sometimes as a circle with a line through it like this, or we can write it as the set open brace, closed brace. This is what we refer to as the null set. It's a set that in, of nothing. There's nothing in the set. And if a lot of you, if you've ever dealt with like Google Sheets and or you've dealt with anything that has a, a tables or something like that and you're looking for it and you're saying, oh, no, there's nothing there. I did a, we did some searches and this is a lot of what you do in regards to like Google Sheets or uh, Microsoft Excel. Um, most all of it is all based on the background and idea of set theory um, and looking on sets. And when you try to find something and you find nothing and I say, Find all of the, the numbers that are a product of five. All right, okay, you would say, no, oh, or a multiple of five. You know, 10, okay, so 10 would be your answer. Find all the numbers that are a multiple of 20, or of, of I don't know, six. Well, none of these numbers are, are multiples of six, so you, your, your set would be the, the null set, the empty set. Is the empty set, is the null set, a subset of A? What is your thoughts? Is the null set a subset? Does A include the null set? And in this one right here, I know I can see there's, there's the hesitation in terms of responding. The answer here is yes. Which leads us to a definition. The null set is considered a subset of all sets. So the null set, we consider the null set to be a subset. F. What about the set 1, 4, 7, 10? Is that a subset of A? Is the set 1, 4, 7, 10 a subset of the set 1, 4, 7, 10? Yes. It is. Very good. It is. These are known as, this is also known as equality. Equality is a subset. And, and what's known about this is um, set A is considered a subset of itself. So any set is considered a subset of itself. So you, you're like, oh, because the, the idea of a subset is that all of my elements are in the other element, are in the, or all of my elements are in the other set. And finally, what about the set 1, 4, 7, 10, 13? Is this a subset of A?
Oh, it ain't. It is not. Why is it not? Because you're a king. Yes. Sorry, 13 is not an element of A. Questions so far. So we've talked about this idea of, we, I've introduced you the null set, this idea behind a subset, and of course, set notation. Okay. So let's continue then. And like I said, I'm not assigning a homework tonight on this because we have to process it. There will be an assignment that will be given like during the class time for tomorrow to get some practice with it. Um, this is what we're going to be doing for the next two plus weeks. We're going to be building and building and building um, on this idea. All right, let's talk about some notations here. All right, so let's say um, A if A is a subset of B which what does that mean again can someone define what I mean but if I say if A is a subset of B What is that? Doesn't it A having the same set as B? So it's you gotta be a, a little bit more specific. You're right, that is that is a property of a subset, but you're 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 actually more so doing the, the what you stated is more of an equality statement rather than a subset statement. So just to, to be careful with our way we said um, all of the elements in A are also in B. We're not saying that they're the same. That's that's the little that's the small little part. We're not saying that A and B are the same, but we're saying that all the elements of A are inside of B then the notation that we use is A, and then we use a C with a line underneath it, B. So that when you see something like that, A and then the C with the line underneath, this means subset. A is a subset of B, which means that if you have, if you know what set A is, then you know, you know the terms that are in set B, but B might have more. Might have more. All right. Typically when we write it this way, um, so this kind of just leaves it up and say, well, B, all of the elements in B are also in A. Um, typically what we mean here though is that B is usually bigger. Um, so our, we're leaving it up to, to question, are they exactly the same? We don't know. This notation is often used, but, um, 
sometimes it's not um, it's not proper to use because if you think about it, it's this one is more left in terms of like unknown. I know all of the elements in A are also in B, kind of like how we've stated right now. But are they the same? I don't know. That's what we're saying. I don't know if they're the same. B, set B might be the same set. It might be 1, 4, 7, 10, like the previous one. They both might be the exact same set because it's or equal to. So, you know, think about um, when you did things like X is less than or equal to 5 in your math class, right? It's or equal to. So it could be the same or it could be less. And it's and and it's and it's also means the same thing. A is less than B. So in other words, we we know that it includes it's less it has less symbols or less elements than B, but they might also be the same. So that's what we refer to as a subset. Equality. Equality notation. So in other words, A and B are the same set, i.e. A is 1, 4, 7, and B is 1, 4, 7. Now, based on, um, based on what we just said, is A a subset of B? Yes. Is B a subset of A? Yes. Yes. So it should be noted here that A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. But in what we're, what we're really saying in terms of our notation, is that A equals B. So that refers to equality. And as I mentioned earlier, and I said all sets are subsets of its own, A is always equal to A. <coughs> a is always a subset of A. And A is also the same is, is is the same. So any set itself is a, is considered a subset, and all sets are equality or equal sets to each other. Okay. So A is a subset. Now, um, yeah. I also just wanted to note that it is okay, it is it is actually okay to, to write this as B and then you write the C backwards. This is uh this is also okay notation. So if you flip if you flip it, it's kind of like when you read an equal signs, um, B is greater than or equal to, which it still means that A is a subset of B. They they mean the same thing. So I want to note that if you flip the the C, which is kind of like that little equal to or the, the little alligator mouth, the Pac-Man mouth, the, the equality sign that you, you use in your traditional math courses, it means the same things. You can read them backwards, but it's not usually, we don't like to read them backwards though. We like to read left to right. Okay. One last vocabulary introduction for today. Like I said, I know I'm introducing new vocabulary. Subsets, sets, equality sets, the null set, elements. They're all vocabulary words from today. The last one we have is what is referred to as a proper subset. All right, a proper subset. So there's, there's a subset. And then there's a proper subset. A proper subset is where A is a subset of B, but A does not equal B.
All right. So in other words, all of the elements in A are in B, but they are not the same set. Okay. So we are definitively, this is a definitive statement that not the same set. Now, when we just say subsets, because by, de by definition, a subset could be equal. Equality sets are also subsets. So there are subsets, but proper subsets are here. So what do you think the notation is for saying that A and B are subsets? So remember, so A, let's say A is one and four, and B is one, four, and seven, all right? So A is a subset of B, we know that, but more importantly, A is a proper set, a proper subset, sorry, of B. Now it sounds weird, like why would you say like, okay, A is a subset of, how do I say that A is a subset of B but not the same set? So we know more information. When you have more information, you wanna project that information. How do you think we're going to write that? How do we write that A is a subset of B, but not the same set? So how do I write that? Now, it is true. You could write this. But once again, we like to write, we like to minimalize our writing. So how would I, how do you think I would write that A is a proper subset? Set when being that A is in B but A is not equal to B. Or would you take a guess? There's just one small change to the subset notation. There's just one small change to the subset notation. So just a little growl, that was it. It's probably what you think it is. If everybody... the mood. Yeah? The, the, the thing that the, the next one for I forgot its name, but you move that. You move that little line underneath, yes. You remove it. You remove that little line underneath, that means equal. So that means it could be equal. So it's just like your your interval your, when you're doing a um, notations in your algebra class. We say A write it a little smaller right there. Right there. You can also it, and, and, and I want to note it can also um, it is also okay to do A like this and then you can actually just do this. You'll see that in some in some uh, in some books and some notations. They'll just cross out the or equal to, so it means the same thing. This is an alternative way, but typically this is the way that we do it. A is a prop. Now we're not so we're saying that A is a subset of B. So what we're saying here is that A is a subset of B. All of the elements in A are also in B. But we're also taking it one step further and saying, not only is A a subset of B, A is a proper subset of B, which means all of my elements in A are in B, but they're not the same set. They are not the same, they do not contain exactly the same thing. So the null set is a sub is a is a, a proper subset of any set. Okay. So what I'm saying here is that the null set, the set, the empty set is a proper subset 
of any set. The null set is a is always a proper subset because the null set includes nothing. Um, and so, well, I guess you can always say we could, as long as a is not the also a null set as well. So if a is if a contains values, of course, then that's how we do it. Um, And that's that's where I'm gonna leave it. So we have what three? Is that three pages? One, two, we have three. So these notations, I want you to hopefully you took the time to write them down. I want you to prop process those. Um, we're gonna start, um, you know, tomorrow. We're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna have an assignment based on what we've covered. Um, you know, a lot of it is vocabulary pieces, parts to it. Um, I, I might put in a near pop part just so that you get some participation grades so that you can go through and check your understanding of, uh, of what we did. I'll try to put that together tonight. Um, and then Monday we'll expand um, and we'll start to, to combine two different sets. Ooh. Um, so that's what I have for you today. There is no homework assignment. As I said, since we're introducing a whole new unit, a whole new vocabulary, um, this idea behind sets and powers are uh, in proper sets, subsets, um, equality sets, elements. <coughs> um, I didn't want to overwhelm you with another homework assignment tonight. Um, that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much.